Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and today we're going to talk about a new Planeswalker and Conspiracy, Dak Faden. Before we start, remember that Dak won't be legal in Modern or Standard. He'll be usable in Vintage, Legacy, and Commander. The rest of this video will focus on his viability in each of these formats. First, let's go over what our pal Dak does. He's one colorless, one blue, and one red for a three loyalty Planeswalker. He can plus one to have target player draw two cards, then discard two cards. He can minus two to gain control of target artifact. Permanently. Totally fair. His last ability is minus six. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, gain control of those permanents. Okay, the ability is crazy. Let's dig into this card a bit. We'll start with Commander. This won't take long. If you could think of a few cards off the top of your head that everyone in Commander plays, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who didn't think of Sol Ring, Lightning Greaves, or Sensei's Divining Top. What do all these things have in common? Yep, you guessed it, they're artifacts. Even if stealing one artifact is all that Dak does before he dies, that's a three mana sorcery to gain control of any artifact. It's a great ability in any stage of the game. I'm finding it difficult to pinpoint what decks he would go in because he would pretty much fit in any deck that runs blue and red. Although I'm sure Nekasar fans are probably pooing themselves in excitement waiting for this guy's release. His first ability is great for card fixing, especially in a format comprised entirely of singletons. His ultimate, if you can hope to get it, would be particularly funny in decks that run helpful auras. You target your opponent's creature with a sweet spell, then just take it. I can just imagine watching the tears fill their eyes. Oh, it's good times. The point is that Dak will obviously see play in Commander. He filters your cards, he steals all the artifacts, and his ultimate lets you control all the things. He's an EDH staple for sure. As soon as Dak was released, everyone in the world was freaking out saying he'd be a staple in Vintage. His minus two ability fueled a lot of the speculation, since Vintage is filled with Moxon and every other powerful artifact ever printed that isn't banned. While there's been a lot of talk about Dak being powerful in the format, a lot of people are having trouble finding a place to put him or even figuring out if he's worth it. Phyrexian Revoker. You might remember this guy from Scars of Mirrodin block. He used to turn off Jace the Mind Sculptor on a regular basis. Now he's rampant vintage in many artifact-centric strategies. If Dak were to invade Vintage, you can bet that every single player will be packing Revokers to deal with the shenanigans. Not only that, but the format has other ways to fight him. Koldoth the Forge Master will assuredly just sacrifice artifacts in response to his ability. Mistress Factory will probably just kill him the turn after he tries to steal something, and grabbing a Batter Skull, while annoying to the opponent, doesn't exactly win you the game. But there is upside here. He's 3 mana, which is definitely cheap enough to be useful. His draw discard ability is also quite powerful, especially for strategies with Goblin Welder. Also, forcing Koldoth the Forge Master to sacrifice when it doesn't want to might not be so bad. If you can drop Dak out on turn 1, which is certainly possible in Vintage, you have a good chance at taking control against a deck like Mud. Another simple advantage to playing Dak is that you can have him and Jace on the battlefield at the same time. A lot of strategies run four Jace. Running three Jace and one Dak doesn't seem so bad. More often than not, you should be able to get both in play with ease unless your opponent has locked you out of casting spells because, you know, it's vintage. I could go on speculating about Dak and vintage forever, but the truth is that there's a huge question mark there. Players are testing with it, but the jury's still out. All I know for sure is that Phyrexian Revoker is about to get a huge boost in playability. Not that it needed it. With Commander and Vintage out of the way, let's talk Legacy. Being a much more popular format than Vintage, this is where Dak Faden will get the most spotlight and scrutiny. The general consensus seems to be that Dak will be a decent sideboard card and not worth main decking. Let's explore that. First, what decks would want Dak? He's cheap, provides card fixing, steals momentum, and does crazy ultimate things. The fact that he cannot protect himself or directly stabilize a board means that control strategies will probably overlook him. If any deck's gonna want him, it'll be something aggressive or something that interacts heavily with the graveyard. Both of these strategies take advantage of the card fixing, his primary ability. The first deck he could fit into would be a blue-red aggressive Delver strategy. He does a ton for this deck. Delver does everything it possibly can to win in its first three or four turns. If that doesn't work, most top decks aren't all that great mid-game. 
The card fixing from deck helps to get through all the early game cards you no longer need, like Spell Pierce and Daze. It's important to keep the aggression on with relevant spells, especially when you're in a grindy matchup against something like Stoneblade. Speaking of Stoneblade, deck's control artifact ability is ideal here. While taking Batter Skull doesn't bring the germ token with it, it does stop the giant equipment from attacking you. You also can't go wrong saying no to a sword or jeet. True Name Nemesis with a jit on it is basically the end of your life. There's very little you can do. But with Dak, you can at least stop the jit from destroying everything you own. Even if you only get the control artifact ability off once, remember, it's three mana to take control of a jit or a sword. It's still really strong. Lastly, if your blue-red Delver deck is running Grim Lava Man, Sir Dak synergizes insanely well with him. His first ability fuels the wizard for the rest of the game. I mean, come on, that is an awesome synergy. If you're running a Rug Delver deck with Tarmogoyf and Nimble Mongoose, Dak is even better. Throwing cards into your graveyard will turn on Mongoose in no time and make Tarmogoyf even bigger. Doing all this while sculpting the perfect hand is pretty much the dream. How is that not good? I know a lot of you skeptics are going to be really upset because I talked Dak up too much for the strategy. The way I see it, I think he makes a great case for himself to be a two of on sideboard. The problem is that in matchups where he's good, he's amazing. In matchups where he's bad, he's terrible. That's the definition of a sideboard card. I'm not saying he'll 100% be a staple, I'm merely saying that playtesting with him is a good idea. The other deck that I really like deck in would be a Loam Variant. This is a strategy going around on Reddit right now. You splash blue for intuition and deck fade in. His filter ability is basically like drawing four cards since that's the kind of thing loam decks do. Just run a bunch of punishing fire and grow over the burn willows. Intuition up your fire, stack your graveyard with Dak, loam your lands back, and boom, synergy. Again, the deck's not proven, but it is being play tested and it could be a thing. Splashing another color in loam isn't all that difficult. Trust me, I've seen people do it before. Just some general thoughts on Dak Faden. His plus one gives you an alternate way to get rid of a bad brainstorm if you don't have a fetch land to do it for you. Another thing to think about is when would his plus one ever be bad for you? The only times would be right after you brainstorm and you want to keep the cards on top or you're about to deck yourself. Other than those two specific times, card filtering is always good. Sure you don't get pure card advantage, but card fixing is card advantage. Don't underestimate it. In many ways, his first ability is his strongest one. About his minus two, this hoses affinity, mud, and makes countertop hate you. Sure, they can just put their divining top on the top of their library, but making them do that when they don't want to is both hilarious and really bothersome for them and their mana. Deck doesn't need to steal a sword or jit to have his theft ability be worth it. No matter what strategy you decide to try him in, only run one or two. He can be very situational and you don't want to draw multiples of him, ever. Some games you don't want to see him at all, hence the number I suggest including. Whether or not to make him main deck or sideboard, that'll take testing, but I find it completely reasonable to start him off on the sideboard in the Delver strategy and maybe in the main in a new loam variant. That deck can make it work. Anyways, what do you guys think about Dak Faden? What kind of strategies do you think he'll be good in? Disagree with me! Totally cool. Let's chat about it in the comments. I love feedback. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.